So we could do some practice with this. And if you download the lecture slides, you'll see I have some Excel commands that you can use to help with this. But so we can use this to then convert anything that's approximately normal into standard normal and to get probability values. So say in the United States that triglycerides are normally distributed and the average triglycerides are 134 milligrams per deciliter. And the standard deviation is 35 milligrams per deciliter. We could then ask medically, what is the probability of obtaining a score below 80 for a randomly selected individual? And so we could do this pretty quickly by converting these values into z-scores and then getting the, z, the probability associated with the z-score. Because as you'll see in some of my other videos, any time that you have a z-score, you can inherently get a p-value from it. And we could look at some calculators to um, kind of give an example of this. So uh, one calculator that I give you is GraphPad. And GraphPad has some very useful things you can do to look up p-values. So if you look at statistical distributions and p-values, you'll see that you can get a p-value from a z, right? So if you have a z-score, you can get a p-value. Similarly, if you have a probability value, you can get a z-score from it. So if I know a z-score, I can type it in here and then I can compute the p-value. If we look, for example, at this, we could get the z-score using the equation that we learned just a bit ago. So if we take the score and subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation, that gets us a z-score. So here we would take 80, subtract 134, and divide by 35, right? So if we do that, negative 54 divided by 35, we get a z-score of negative 1.54. So this score would be 1.54 standard deviations below average. So then if we take our value and plug it in to compute a p-value, we get a two-tailed p-value here of 0.1236. So that's two-tailed. So that means that we're going on either side, plus or minus. So if we look back at our distributional picture here, what it's doing is it's giving us the space on this side and the space on this side. Now, our question didn't ask for both sides. Our question asked, what is the probability of obtaining a score below? So we only want half of that value. So half of this would give us the probability of being below negative 1.54. So if we do 0.1236 divided by 2, we see that the probability is 0 0.06. What that tells us is there are only 6% of cases that would be at this score or lower, right? for a random person from this distribution. So this person kind of has a low triglyceride count. Now, if we use the convention that we learned about in probability of 0.05, we wouldn't quite say that's statistically significant. So perhaps your physician would say something like, well, those triglycerides are kind of low. We'll just keep an eye on them, right? Or maybe if it's you know good to be that low with triglycerides, they'd be like, wow, that's pretty good. Now, in the same way that we could take any score x score from any normal distribution and turn it into a z score that is make it a standard normal distribution we can also flip that around so if you had a z score and wanted to get a raw score from it you could simply isolate x to solve for it so if you take that original equation and rearrange it what you'll find is that an x score can be found by having the mean and adding to it the z score times the standard deviation and once you do that it will allow you to obtain the original X score. So to get an X score, you need to know the distributional characteristics, right? It's a normally distribu normal distribution with some mean and some standard deviation. And you need to know the score. And as long as you have that information, you can get the X score by using this type of equation, right? So we'll have one more little thing we'll look at for practice here. And uh, I'm going to leave this one to you with some of the skills, look at some of the other videos and try to get the answer. But imagine that you have a friend who is trying to get into the police academy in California, and the police academy requires a test to be taken, and this test is, scores are normally distributed with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. 
Now, only the top 10% of applicants are accepted. So you have to be in the top 10% of scores. Now, your friend, it doesn't help him to tell him, you know, what Z score he needs because your friend doesn't know what Z score he's going to get. He needs to know how many points, right, which would be back in the X or the raw units. How many points on the test do I need to get? So how would you go about solving this? Well, the first thing you need to do is figure out what Z score corresponds to the the point one right upper right or has a cumulative probability of point nine. So a cumulative prob probability means everything up to this point, right? So if we look back at our distributional picture here, a cumulative probability would be, so say that I'm looking for 10% and say that's right here in the distribution, okay? The area to the right of that would be everything over here, right? This small tail. So a tail in a distribution is the small chunk right? Now, the cumulative probability would be everything up to this point, and you start on the low end and work your way right. That's right. You start on the left and go right. So cumulative would be everything up to that point, which would be, say, up to here. Anytime you're asked to solve for something, and I have a video about solving for unknowns with some examples that I would suggest you watch. Anytime you're looking to solve for values in a normal distribution, you're always going to be given a certain set and there's gonna be something standing out that's missing. Now, what are the values that can go into it? Well, we know that a Z-score is calculated from a raw score, a mean, and a standard deviation. So you have Z, you have X, which is the raw score, the mean, and the standard deviation. Those are four possible values, right? And then you also have a P-value, which is a probability. And the probability is derived by knowing these properties and knowing that you're dealing with a normal distribution. So anytime you have a Z, a Z score can immediately be converted into a P value like we saw on GraphPad. That's all you need. So these two things, you can go back and forth between them, no problem. If I have a Z, I can get a P. If I have a P, I can get a Z. Because the distribution standard normal, the Z contains all the information I need to locate its P. So the Z would be on this X axis. This contains the Z values. And the P is on this Y axis. So if, if I know the Z-score, I can say, oh, here's that Z-score, and then I can say, well, what's this P-value for this space, right? So those can go back and forth, no problem. Now, I can also go from X to Z and Z to X, and we learned that using the equations on the previous slides, right? Now, you can also go from X to P and P to X, but to do this, you need to know the mean and the standard deviation for the distribution that you're dealing with, right? So there's always going to be, you know, enough information to solve for what you need, but there might be something that's left out. So in this case, we have to identify, well, what do we know? We know a p-value. It's given as a percentage here, but we know that p, right, for the area right is 0.1. Now that's critical that it's area it's the area to the right. And the reason that matters is because if you look for P.1 as a cumulative probability, you're going to be telling your friend to get a very low score, right? And and hopefully you can intuitively see that for example, if you get a score of like tell your friend to get a 35. Well, if you told him to get a 35 and the average is 50, hopefully you can realize that that was really bad advice. You told him to bomb the test. You told him to do below average, right? So, so hopefully you can make some sense out of that and kind of gut check yourself. Ask, does that answer make any sense, right? If I want my friend to do really well and be in the top 10%, and then I tell him to do below average, isn't that contradictory? Yes. So it's really important to realize that as an area right, you want the top 10%. But if you're dealing with that as area left, that's that you want to be at the 90th percentile, right? So those are two different ways to look at the same thing. So to say that you want to be at the 90th percentile or to say you want to be in the top 10%, okay? So pay attention uh, to how you're inputting your data. Watch my videos that Excel can really help with this. Otherwise, you can use the tables that are in the back of your book, but I often find those tables to be a bit cumbersome. So I find GraphPad and Excel to be preferable. And as a function of that, I even built a help calculator for you to do some of this work. And I have a tutorial that shows you how to use it as well. But so in this case, we know a p-value, right? So we have a p-value. We know a mean and we know a standard deviation. 
So here we have this piece of information. We have this piece of information. We have this piece of information. And in fact, what we want is this, right? We want to know the X score. That is what score for X occurs at the 90th percentile or the score that starts the top 10% of scores. And so we have all the information we need to get this, right? And so you can do this using an Excel command directly, or you can do this if you're going to use your book. What you have to do is first calculate the Z, find the Z score that occurs at this percentile, and then use that to solve for X. Okay, so try to do it. See how you how you get things figured. If you have trouble with this practice example after watching some of my other videos, let me know and we'll try to work through it together to make sure that you um, have some sense of it.